Hey, what's up guys? Today we're talking about how I like to manage multiple object buffers from Simo 4D and After Effects without having to duplicate a lot of layers using the set mat effect. Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm just talking about how I like to manage multiple object buffers inside of After Effects if I render them out from Simo 4D and I want to control a lot of layers. Um, I love using the set mat effect because not only does it limit the amount of layers, but also gives you more control over the effects when you use a set mat effect instead of using any sort of luma mats or track mats. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'll make sure to transition. What? All right, cool. So here we are. So. This was a unique project where the client wanted lots and lots of control to make future changes if anything came up and they wanted to change out. So kind of the main thing was the text, even the sponsor, the monitors, uh, the flags. So I end up having to break out a lot of object buffers. So let me show you a quick way of how I did that and made changes easily if it came up. So normally you have your background render right here. This is our main render from Simon 4D. And this is an object buffer, that's just the title. So normally we would duplicate this and set it to LumaMat. And now we have that separated out. So let me show you an easier way to do that with more control. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. I'm gonna take the background, gonna go up here to set mat. And let me duplicate this layer one more time. And this would be, let's say this is the podium text layer. Wow, cannot type, let's try that again. All right, so I'll just go up here, set this to luminance since we have luma mats. And I'm gonna select this podium layer. So now without duplicating our layers and using one effect, we have our podium tiles separated. So from here, I would just basically duplicate the process and get all our object buffers in there, but I don't have to duplicate the too many files. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. And we'll say this is one of the monitors. Come up here, go to object buffer seven. And now we have that monitor in the shot. So I'm just gonna keep doing this with every layer. Duplicated this layer. Now I'll switch to object buffer eight. Got the monitor behind. Duplicate the layer. You see where I'm going with this, obviously. Object buffer nine. Gonna do it once more. Object buffer 10, which was another monitor that's spinning around. And the great thing as well is if you name each layer, so let me duplicate this. However you name the layer, it's gonna come up in the set mat effect. So I know as soon as I select this mat, the 360 text should come up. So there's a 360 text. Duplicate it again. I renamed this layer to flags. I should get some flags in the background. Boom, and so there, those are there as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to set this up. I'll pause it here and we'll come back when everything is set up to talk about some more features that you can do with the set mat effect. All right, so here I've kinda set everything up, got all my set mats in. And let me show you a couple of great features that you can't do with regular track matting without either pre-comping or duplicating a lot of layers or just cluttering up your timeline. So for example, uh, let's take this podium text. And the great thing about set mat is it sees anything that affects the alpha. So if I go over here to simple choker and I wanna choke in the edges for some reason, you know, it's gonna see that once I apply the set mat effect. And this works with you know a lot of effects. It's gonna extend past the boundaries of what track mat would normally be able to do. So let's try some glow effects. And let me show you kind of one of the things that happens if you do it the old way. So all I did was duplicate this layer, our podium text. I'm gonna take the set mat effect off and I'm gonna do the traditional way of just using a luma mat. So now that's soloed. But here's the issue. So I not only do I have two layers for this now, but let me add something like a glow. So if I add a glow and I wanna add, you know, up, up the radius a little bit, it's gonna cut off at the edges. 
it's not going to go past the edges because the mat is affecting that. And there's no real, there's not a real easy way to get that to go past the edges of the text. So with that kind of in mind, let me show you some of the other effects that make using set mat a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this layer that we were using. And now we're back to this podium text using the set mat effect. Let me add a glow. And now if I increase the radius, it's gonna go past the edges however you might want it. Which is really nice. You still have one layer and you're just going on from there. And, and the best thing too is right now this is using layer 10. I can put this in any order. I can put this layer anywhere. However I put the layer in the timeline, it never matters. Huh? Oh, come on guys, matters, set mat, travel mat. No, okay, never mind. Anyways, just me. So anyways, that's one of the awesome effects with that. And let's, uh, you know, let's, let's keep going. You know, while I have this title going, let me delete the glow. Maybe you wanted to add some sort of effects to make your title, you know, shine a little bit more. So here's our base title. Let's say on top of it, I wanted to add you know, a fast blur. And I wanted to have maybe some, let's do horizontal lines. You know, set mat also sees a blending style, so I can set this to add. Maybe I duplicate this again, I change it to vertical. You know, we kind of got a fake little star glow thing kind of looking there. Um, let me uh, duplicate it once more. Then let's see, duplicate that. Um, Maybe they just do a regular overall fast blur, you know, because I kind of want to get a little bit of a glow in there. I can turn the opacity down a little bit if I need to. And this is just, you know, throwing stuff out there. You can make it look better, of course. Uh, let's throw a curves on that, you know, and get you know, a little bit different color with, uh, with our curves going here. Let's see here. Let's do a little bit of red, maybe. Yeah, there we go. You know, so we're getting something, something's happening. And, you know, all we did is use four layers, which we could technically actually use less with these effects, but the point is you don't have to make eight layers to do something this fast. So now that I kind of showed you how I broke everything up for this project, let me go ahead and I'm going to solo this just to kind of show you what my render looked like out of 74D. And for me, I try not to take too much time in cinema because I know if I can break it up, I can work faster and have more control in After Effects. So this was kind of the before, everything's very flat, but I have lots of object buffers, uh, broke it all up, and eventually I was able to color correct, add some little glows, and kind of high con it to where, you know, I liked it, all controlling inside of After Effects with the set matte effect. All right, guys, that's how I like to manage object buffers from Cinema 4D inside of After Effects. I hope that helps you. And remember, it doesn't stop there. You can use a set matte effect for uh, any layer that you want to use as a matte or a luminance matte. So uh, I hope that helps. And I have another tutorial coming out on Thursday. It's going to be some motion tracking in Mocha and screen replacement. So yeah, tune in for that. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.